All right, so for number 15, um, it says the table below shows stopping distances in feet for car, a car tested three times at, um, at each of five speeds. We hope to create a model that predicts the stopping distance for the speed of the car, okay? So, um, shoot. Yeah, I, well, let's just crank through it. So it says, explain why the mo a linear model m may not be appropriate. So we're going to have to crank through uh, and do the math. So I'm going to try to go real quick. I don't know. We might run out of time. So we got to go in here, and I've, I basically I have to edit and put this data in. Um, so um, I've got 20, and I can tell you what's going to happen. So I've got 20... Let me put this on the other screen. So this, our x-axis is going to be the speed. So at 20, um, it took, whoops, at 20 miles per hour, it had a stopping distance of 64 feet. And then another stopping distance at 20 miles per hour. Well, let me just put these down because it's going to be the same. So 30, 30, 30, 330s, 40. 40, 40, 50, 50, 50, 60, 60, 60. So they did five different speeds, 20, 30, 40, and then took a, a sample of three different stopping distances. So at 20 miles per hour, you had 62, 64, and then 59. Uh, at 30 miles an hour, they had 114, 118, 105. Um, on the next set, which was 40 miles per hour, they had 153, 171, 165. Um, then they had 231, 203, and 238. Um, the next one was 317, 321, and 276. So now, if I plot this data, oh, let me clear this out. If I plot this data, there's going to be some issues here. The main issue is, is well, you'll see when we plot it. Uh, we always want to do zoom stat in this particular case. Oh, dimension error. Oh, it won't let me plot it, I don't think, on the calculator because it's, uh, let me see here. We've got L1, L2. So then graph, let me try just graphing it. Oh, I got more than one plot on, I think. Let me see what's going on here. get out of here yeah okay so I got to turn plot 3 off that's what was screwing it up I think I hope and then for my zoom we're gonna do zoom 9 okay there it is all right cool okay so this is what it looks like when you plot it now it looks kind of linear but notice that it starts to spread so the residual is gonna be kind of wonky so um, for part one, so the questions say, let's, let's address, because some of this is conceptual and some of this is not conceptual. So for part A, um, let's, let's, let's crank through, let me, I forgot to do one thing. Let, let's crank through and fi find out what the regression is. So I'm going to hit second, stat, whoops, no, just stat, and then go to calculate. And we're going to go and just run a linear regression. All right. Um, and I'm just going to calculate that. So I've got uh, the values here. So let me write these down real quick. I'm going to move this to a different screen. So for part A, my distance 
is equal to negative 65.9 um, plus 5.98 times the speed. And I have an R squared value. So it's a pretty strong correlation. That's not bad. But why is that not good? Well, it's, it's definitely strong because my R squared value is high. It's definitely positive because if you look at the slope of it, Um, and it appears to be straight. But what do we got to do to double check that? So, so far it's looking pretty good. But what have we been talking about for a while? Well, let's, let me just take a screenshot of that real quick of the graph. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to store that regression. So let me store the regression real quick because I need to graph my line. Um, so I'm going to come down here and you're going to hit vars, y vars, function, y sub 1. Now it'll just store that there. So when I graph it, I have my linear regression. Okay. So. Let me take another screenshot of that. And so let's put this bad boy in here somewhere. I'll make it a little smaller. What do you notice about this? Yeah, the residuals are going to spread apart at the end. So let's let's do the residual uh, plot. So to do the residual plot, I got to go back in here. And remember, the residual is the distance away from the predicted value. Okay. So now we can do that. So the first thing I need to do is I need to go into my stats and edit. I want to plug in. I want to figure out what this is. So I got to plug in the equation, right? So I'm going to I'm going to go up here to the top. I got to click up here. I keep clicking on my keyboard, it won't let me. And I'm going to plug in this formula um, of negative 65.9 plus um, 5.98, right? But that's going to be multiplied by and now I'm going to multiply it by my x value, which is L20, or I mean L1. So see this little blue L1 here? So if I hit second, L1, that gives me all those values, okay? Now to do the residual, i got to come over here, and I've got to, re I got to subtract, um, it's y minus y hat, right? So I'm going to, I think it's L2 minus L3, correct? So I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to hit second L2 minus L3, okay? All right, so I've got some positive and I've got some negative values. That's what we would suspect. And then I need to compare that to the predicted distance. So I need to do a plot where this is my x-axis right and then this is the residual so this would be my x-axis and it will, will be my y so that's easy enough to do so i'm going to go in here to stat plots i got to turn off plot one so let me just turn that off because it'll throw things off and then i'm going to come back to i could do plot two i suppose let's do plot two turn that on and I want to compare that to L3, 
to L4, and I just want to do a stat plot, but I, I guess I better turn that on. And now I go to zoom, and I'm going to select option number nine, zoom stat. Okay? So now this is my residual plot. So let's take a copy of that. What do you notice about the residual plot? They have that curve. Yeah. So there's an issue there with the residual plot. Yeah, go ahead and get the door. So this is the residual plot. Thanks. Okay. And what is so what does all this tell me? Well, basically, the, the association between the speed and the stopping distance is strong and positive and appears straight. Higher speeds are generally associated with a greater stopping distance. The linear regression model we have listed there, um, it, it, it kind of explains the variability in the speed with regards to the stopping distance. However, the residual plot has a curved pattern. The linear model is not appropriate. So when, when they say it's a, remember if your residual it has a curved pattern, what they're talking about is look at this, it looks like it, it does this. And we don't like that. So then because it's curved, um, let's write that down so you guys can see it. Because it's curved, it's not good. So the residual plot is curved. Um, linear uh, is not appropriate. Okay, let me try to knock out, um, I think we might have to do this in parts. So that's part A. Um, for part B, it says re-express the data. Yeah, we won't have time to do that. So we're just going to stop here at part A, and then we'll do B, C, and D tomorrow. Okay? Okay.